An important victory for the right to keep and bear arms comes from Ohio, of all places, touching fingers with what is effectively a version of a red flag law. It's important that we track these cases, and I have to give credit to Eugene Volek and the Volek conspiracy for flagging this important issue this morning. You're not going to want to miss this breakdown by an Ohio appellate court basically vindicating the right to keep and bear arms of an individual in a major litigation with... Not even an ex-girlfriend. I'm not even sure what to call her. We'll have to talk about it when we get back. Hey, folks. I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, and author of many books, including Disarmed, What the Ukraine War Teaches Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. All right, folks. Out of the Court of Appeals for the state of Ohio in Warren County, Warren County, Ohio, a case called Anne Anna Lazor versus Stephen Souders has given rise to a very interesting precedent that may be touching fingers with red flag laws across this country or allegations of stalking and losing one's gun rights by virtue of such an assertion. Now, just to put this into context, what happened in this case was uh, Anna Lazar and Mr. Souders, they were apparently communicating vis-a-vis -vis each other on a dating app called Hinge when uh, Lazar, the female, the woman, posted his image, meaning Mr. Souders' image, to a private Facebook group for women to see and asked basically, does anybody know this guy? Are there any red flags I should know about him before I meet him? Keep in mind that this interplay between uh, Miss Lazar and Mr. Souders had entirely occurred on the internet, on Facebook, on Hinge, and all these other things. They hadn't occurred. They had never met or anything like that. It's not even clear. I think they had talked on the phone, but they were all doing this online. So it turns out that some of the women who saw Mr. Souders' photo on this Facebook post uh, had negative interactions with him and had negative impressions of him, and they basically in these people conveyed to Miss Lazar, don't deal with him apparently. So Miss Lazar blocks him and no longer talks to him on Hinge and Facebook. That's what went down. But then uh, Mr. Souders contacted Lazar on other platforms, including using an anonymous account on Facebook to quote unquote text yell for at her for blocking and defaming him. And apparently he continued texting her unwanted messages. Okay, that's where this all came down. And then apparently, and I'm, I'm going to kind of cut this all and summarize it quickly. Apparently, he sues her for defamation according to this opinion. And then she seeks a uh, civil stalking protection order saying that he was stalking her even though they had never actually met face to face. There's a hearing, believe it or not. There's actually testimony taken. And she testifies that Mr. Souders had never threatened harm to her. She admitted that. But she said that she had experienced personal significant mental distress as a result of his actions. Um, and she, she was able to obtain, based on this trial judge's ruling, and we're going to talk about what the appeals court did, but she obtained a one-year civil stalking protection order which prohibited Mr. Souder from interacting with her. And here's the key for the Second Amendment. It prohibited him from using or purchasing any kind of a deadly weapon. So basically, this civil uh, stalking protection order between these two people who had literally never met until the court hearing, believe it or not, gave rise to Mr. Souder losing his right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. So there's an appeal taken to the Court of Appeals in Ohio for Warren County, and it turns out, happy to report, that they respected the right to keep and bear arms, and they specifically said, well, we're going to defer to the lower court in the granting of the civil uh, stalking protection order. We are, even though we're going to say that's fine, we, the court, are going to go on and say that to take away uh, Mr. Souter's right to keep and bear arms, to deprive him of the ability to acquire firearms and or to have firearms, goes too far, and there's no way this is allowed constitutionally in this particular case. There's then a discussion of the federal uh, prohibited person law. As you know, 18 U.S.C. 922G lays out the people that are not allowed to possess firearms under federal law, and one of those is 922G8, which deals with so-called domestic uh, partners, if you will, and specifically what the law says that's relevant to this is a person may not possess a firearm if they are subject to a court order that was issued after a hearing of which such person received actual notice and that which such person had an opportunity to participate. B, restrain such person from harassing, stalking, or threatening an intimate partner, key phrase, an intimate partner of such person 
or child of such intimate partner or person or engage in another conduct that would place an intimate partner in reasonable fear of bodily injury to the partner or child. And C, includes a finding that such person represents a credible threat to the physical safety of such intimate partner or child, or B, by its terms, explicitly prohibits the use, attempted use, or threatened use of physical force against such intimate partner or child that would reasonably be expected to cause bodily injury. Okay, so that's the federal law. Now, this court talks about this and says, well, let's talk about what's going on here. So specifically, they address the arguments raised by Mr. Sounders as to why he should not lose his right to keep and bear arms. Specifically, what the court writes is the following. Appellant Mr. Sounders argues that the trial court erred when it imposed a firearm restriction prohibiting him, him from possessing, using, carrying, or obtaining any deadly weapon for the duration of the civil stalking protection order because, one, there is no nexus between appellant's conduct and the firearm restriction, and, two, he does not qualify as a family or household member. Now, of course, keep in mind that prior to the hearing, this man, Mr. Souders, and this woman, Ms. Lazar, had never literally met. Everything had been online through Facebook or Hinge or these other, you know, interactions, uh, which you can get the details from the opinion, which I'll try to, you know, link to down below. Now, the good news is that the court comes back and says, yeah, you know, you can't deny this guy his right to keep and bear arms. It's just simply not appropriate in this conduct. Uh, in this context because they never even met. Specifically, what the court writes in its opinion is quite compelling. This is what it says. We find that the trial court erred in including the firearm restriction in the civil stalking protection order against the appellant. It is undisputed that the parties have never met in person and that the only personal contact, contact between them occurred during the full hearing. Under any definition of the term, Lazar is not and never was an intimate partner of appellant. Therefore, 18 U.S.C. 922 G8 does not apply and does not support the imposition of the firearms restriction. We further find that the evidence in the record does not support the imposition of the firearm restriction under the relevant state civil code here. No evidence was presented that appellant used or threatened to use a weapon to cause mental distress to Lazar. No evidence was presented that appellant even owned a firearm. The firearm restriction therefore does not bear a sufficient nexus to the conduct the trial court was attempting to prevent. And in light of that, the court found the following. We therefore affirm the trial court's decision to issue the civil stalking protection order against appellant, but modify the judgment pursuant to appellate rule 12b, thereby vacating the firearm restriction prohibiting appellant from possessing, using, carrying, or obtaining any deadly weapon for the duration of the order. So there you have it. Now, why does this matter to your Second Amendment rights? I think there's a lot of things. First of all, there's a lesson here, of course, that if you're interacting with people online, be sensitive to what you say. And if there's red flags about them, maybe just back away from them uh, for obvious reasons, because this is an example where an interaction entirely online gave rise to uh, this gentleman or this man, uh, right, Stephen Souders, losing his right to keep and bear arms for a period of time while that order was pending. Now, maybe he has resources, but he was able to fight it to the Court of Appeals and was able to successfully win. But, you know, you get the wrong panel, the wrong judge, you don't have a money, all sorts of things can go wrong. You may not be that lucky. So be very sensitive to your interactions so this kind of thing doesn't occur to you. So that's just a practical common sense bit of advice from this opinion as I see it that you can derive from it. The second thing, of course, is it is good to see that courts across the country, some courts, those that are not in the nutty blue states, uh, Ohio being perhaps a little bit more commonsensical than some other states, you have judges that are willing to look carefully to make sure that fundamental rights, including the fundamental right to keep and bear arms, is not willy-nilly infringed upon and taken away. So it's good to see judges watching these things carefully because the one of the concerns I've always flagged, going back to my book, First They Came for the Gun Owners, which you can see copies of it behind me here, uh, I talk specifically, I have a whole chapter on the dangers of red flag laws and that's a reason why I think John Cornyn, that senator from Texas, under no circumstances should be the leader of the Republican, uh, Republican Senate majority or whatever you want to call it, the Senate minority right now. But whatever it is, you don't want uh, John Cornyn anywhere near leadership as far as I'm concerned. You don't, you don't even want him in the United States Senate if you support the right to keep him for arms. After he sold us out in 2022 while we're winning the Bruin case, he's literally selling us out, giving Joe Biden a big gun control victory at the federal level 
touching fingers with, among other things, red flag laws. Absolutely pathetic performance by John Corden. No support from, uh, I, I don't think anyone should support him for anything except maybe dog catcher. Uh, but with that said, let's carry on. The point is that this is the kind of opinion you should be aware of because it may come back to be useful to people in your jurisdiction, in your home, or in your scholarship if you're talking about red flag laws or other attempts to short uh, short circuit or cut around our fundamental rights in the name of domestic violence or any of these other sort of you know phrases because again uh, this woman was able to get a restraining order which is which is stuck and it may be appropriate but there was no again uh, they never even met. And there was apparently no suggestion of violence or anything like that, uh, no threatening of a weapon or anything. And nevertheless, a restraining order was entered and he lost his gun, gun rights for a period of time. Now, the guy may be a terrible guy. I have no idea, but it doesn't matter. The point is you need to be aware of the dangers out there in the world uh, where virtual strangers can possibly take away your right to keep and bear arms in, if you're in the wrong jurisdiction. So be sensitive and cognizant of this uh, as you live your lives. But in the short run, uh, this is a decision you should be aware of. And again, if you're doing scholarship writing or you're working on red flag issues or restraining order issues and the Second Amendment, you want to be aware of this and you want to read this one carefully and see what you can do with it. So there you have it. All right, folks, uh, good news out of Ohio for the Second Amendment. Uh, we will uh, keep you informed as if this case goes anywhere else. And again, thank you to the Volek Conspiracy. If you don't follow the Volek Conspiracy, if you're a super legal geek, you may want to check that site out with run by Eugene Volek. It's very good. That's where I got the reference to uh, this discussion. I'll put a link to it down below. And again, don't forget to subscribe here and resubscribe if you get knocked off. Don't forget to also follow me on X at Four Boxes Diner, and we will see you again soon here. Yes, indeed, at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table two A.